Hi, and thank you for tuning in to this very special video. I'm almost ready to start reading tarot cards professionally once again. And the only reason I'm not jumping into it immediately today is that I have two very sacred decks that I'm waiting to receive. The orders have been placed. It's in the works as soon as they arrive. I will announce that the readings have begun and I'll share the link for where you can sign up to book yours. But meanwhile, today is the full moon day and because this is such a powerful super moon, full moon in Sagittarius, which is the sign of intuition and spiritual progress, it's, an, it's a super moon, meaning it's closer to the earth than the majority of moons, so it's going to appear bigger in the sky and it's a total lunar eclipse. The combined force of all of these different energies, the, the full moon in Sagittarius, the total lunar eclipse, the super moon, all of this combined means that astrologically we are entering into the time of an energy portal that allows for greater manifestation and greater creation. This video is also kind of a show and tell because as you can see behind me, I've set up a new reading space for where I'm going to do my tarot consultations and crystal consultations right here in my home. And the spiritual art, the, the literally the art and craft project I've worked on for the past few days is hanging on the wall behind me. That mystical watery purple blue green triple moon wall hanging that you see it's actually made out of recycled cardboard and acrylic paint that i have left over from my art school days and little odds and ends that i've glued to it including ribbon scraps and sorry border trim that i bought years ago so it's kind of fun when we take something old and turn it into something new and I was contemplating on that as I came to that project's completion when it was time to hang it on the wall. I was thinking about how the full moon isn't just something that appears in the night sky and brings with it the energy of transformation. The full moon is something that was created over the previous 28 nights of the lunar cycle. It's a build up and it's the climax of that energy. So when it comes to utilizing that full moon vibration to create what we want in life, it's not a matter of wiping our slates totally clean and starting from the bottom. It's a matter of recalling all the different lessons we've learned along the path, all the people we've encountered, the things we enjoyed as well as the things we didn't enjoy so much, and building out of all of those little pieces the wholeness of who we are and what we are right now in this moment. For me, getting back into tarot card reading is kind of about that. It's about not only picking back up a practice that I used to really enjoy doing, it's also about integrating all the lessons I've learned over the past few years since last I was reading tarot cards and allowing those to strengthen the new beginning I'm having with this spiritual practice instead of seeing it like I got sidetracked and pulled off of my path for a time period, a time being, sorry, a time period. I have so many, you can tell it's time for me to start reading cards again when I have too many thoughts trying to come through at once. But what I was saying is it's not like I got sidetracked for a period of time and that now I'm trying to learn how to read cards again. It's more like I went on a different path, accumulated some different kinds of experience, some different kinds of wisdom, and now the wholeness making up the full moon that is my current situation is even fuller than it was the last time I was doing something like this. And I'm sure the same is true in your life also. We as human beings have a tendency to look back at things that we did in the past that we're proud of, that we enjoyed, that felt fulfilling for us. And if we no longer have those things, we catastrophize and we beat ourselves up and we feel like we've lost it. 
and we feel like we have to start from the beginning all over again as if all of our past efforts are just a wasted garbage that has to be thrown out. For me, the message of today's full moon is that what we have done has made us what we are now. And by nature of the fact that you want to get back into something or start something new, it means you have been primed and prepared and made ready to achieve success exactly in that, whatever that may be. I might sound like a broken record. I know I spoke a little bit about something like this in my last video, but I think that's because it's something I feel so passionate about. In any case, you will be seeing this after the full moon. It might be the day after or two days after, depending on when I get this uploaded. So don't worry, you haven't missed the portal. You haven't missed the gateway in any way whatsoever. That portal, because of the power of this total lunar eclipse, is going to remain for the following six months. I've heard that from a few astrologers I like to follow online. I've read that in my lunar magic books. And what makes this so exciting is that during this six month window of time, the intentions we set, the manifestations we prepare for, the actions we take, the desires that we start taking action towards materializing are going to be so profoundly blessed and elevated and energized. So if there's something you wanted to do, but you've procrastinated, now is the time to do it. If there's something you've wanted to tell somebody, but you've shied away, now is the time to say it. If there's a project that you want to rekindle, like you started writing a book and then you set it aside, now's the time to pick it up and start adding to it. Not scrap it and start from scratch, but start building up even more on what you've been working towards. It's a very exciting time. And just to give you a little preview, a little gift, a little example of what readings will be like from me when I start doing them professionally, I am going to give you a sample reading right now. So the way I'm going to do this is based on what I've seen other online tarot card readers do, which is offer you like a choose your own destiny. I'm going to offer you three piles of cards and I'll put in the video description box below the timestamps you can go to depending on whether you choose pile one, two, or three. So you're not going to see me for the rest of this video. You're going to see my tarot table, my practice, and let's get right into it. So these are the three piles you have to choose from, pile one, pile two, pile three. And just check out the timestamps in the video description and click on the pile that draws you the most. Group one, welcome to your reading. I'm cleansing the table today with moon incense in celebration of the fact that we are in the beginning of the cycle of the full moon in Sagittarius. Your reading starts before I even pull any cards. And that's because the first symbol I'd like to interpret for you is the selection of stone that you made. This is a slice of palisite meteorite which combines both metal and rock of an extraterrestrial origin. Whenever we work with the energy of the meteorites, we are bringing into our earthly experience the energy of the stars, the cosmos, the galaxy. So if you feel particularly drawn at this point in time to meditate on the night sky, to gaze at the astral bodies as they move around in space, you might be feeling a star seed connection or an otherworldly source within you. You can trust that and enjoy that. Actually, before I get too carried away with shuffling the cards, I'm going to set the strong intention that all the messages that come through for you today come from your highest source of spiritual wisdom, from your guides, from your intuition, and I'm setting the strong intention to let myself be a vessel through which your highest messages can be received. 
I'll play a little bit of the singing bowl. Let's enter into the vibration of that sound bath, and then we'll look at your cards. I don't know about you, but I just entered a deeper level of breathing by doing that. All right, so pile one. This reading today is not focusing on any set aspect of life. It's not about romance or career or the next step spiritually. Today, I'm leaving it wide open for whatever your guides, whatever existence, whatever those in the love light vibration want to share with you. All right, so the first card I'm turning over is the card of Amber and a beautiful plant called Breeza. So the Amber energy is all about ancestral connections, the ancient history of the earth, the solidification, the crystallization, of the past and how we experience it in our present moment. When you hold a piece of amber, you're holding a fossil of ancient earth history. It's tree sap that has become stone over millennia. And whenever this comes up in a reading, it represents holding on to aspects of your identity from past lives and from past experiences within this life and understanding how to incorporate those instead of just ignoring them or dropping them. So now is a time for you to meditate on all the aspects of self that you've been, what you've done, what you've believed, and to see how moving forward those can be incorporated into the next aspect of your life. Now I'm going to move into the Osho Zen Tarot. Say what you will about Osho. I don't believe in following gurus anymore. I definitely don't believe any one person has all the answers or that anybody can give enlightenment to anybody else. The spiritual path is such a personal journey. But of all the decks on the market, this is still my favorite. And I think it's more because of the energy of the artist Ma Deva Padma than anything else. She's put together a beautiful deck. So from the Osho Zen Tarot, your message of the day. We're gonna go with the three cards. The top is the present, the left is the past, the one on the right is the future. So this could be a little bit difficult of a time in your life. I'm going to pull the camera back so you can see these more fully. The schizophrenia card is not a card implying in any way whatsoever that you suffer mental illness. The schizophrenia card symbolizes being caught between two worlds and not knowing which one to move into. It's like your past is there, your future is there, and you're straddling that schasm in between, wondering where should you be focusing your attention? Where should you be putting your effort? Now, this can have so many different meanings. It could mean letting go of a partner while going through a breakup, but not being ready to jump into something new just yet and feeling like you're caught between two places. When it comes to career, it could be being stuck between the worlds of practicality and the world of creative fulfillment, holding on to something because it's dependable and you're attached to that reliable, steady income, but wanting to move into doing something that feels more fulfilling to you and being really caught in that stuck energy of limiting belief where you think you can't have both. And so, when this card comes up as the present moment card, the main focus, your main energetic mission right now 
is to decide what you want most. Instead of feeling like you're caught between two impossibilities, caught be between one option that's okay but not great and another option that's great but doesn't feel attainable. And instead, focus on all the actions you can take, all the decisions you can make, all the declarations you can assert within yourself in order to get what you want to achieve. Now, I know that's easier said than done because another aspect of this card is the indecision aspect. Maybe you don't even know what you want right now, and that's okay. What matters isn't what you know or what you think your reality is. What matters is your strong commitment, your strong decision to discover it. A lot of people say that when it comes to manifestation, you have to hold a strong vision, hold a strong intention, align all of your actions towards it. But all of that, as good as that advice is, all of that only works if you already know what you want. And so what's coming through here is that you don't necessarily know what you want yet. Part of the reason for that when we look into the past is visible in this letting go card, which has appeared in the reversed position. When letting go appears reversed, it means that when cycles have come to an end in your life, you have exhibited a tendency to try to hold on even though the cycle has come to a complete space. Again, I can go into relationships. I keep hearing that in my inner space, that this relates to people you've had in your life. Imagine when a relationship comes to an end, and this can be with a romantic partner or with a friend or with a relative. When both of you know that you are no longer fulfilling each other's expectations, and it's not fun, it's not an enjoyable partnership anymore. Maybe your group of friends have all decided that they want to go to McDonald's every day and you've decided to go vegan. And so it's just not fun for you to go out to eat with them anymore because it upsets you. When that kind of a situation comes up, if you don't want to let go, even though you can tell the energy is no longer serving you, it can create a really painful break. Romantically, of course, this is amplified when a romantic relationship comes to an ending and you've served the purpose you were meant to serve in each other's lives and now it's time to move on. A lot of the times we still feel attached to the person. When this card comes up, it can be a very good practice to go in and see why you felt that attachment to a person even though you weren't leading each other in the life direction that creates the greatest good. And I know it wouldn't create the greatest good when it's in the past here because it came to an ending. If you can look in and see why it is you still felt attached to the person even when it was time to let go, you can mentally create the smooth break that didn't exist for you physically at that time. It is possible to change the effect the past has on your present by changing your perception of the past. So if you think back to a breakup that was difficult, or the ending of a friendship that was difficult, or the termination of employment that was difficult, and contemplate on why you didn't want to let go of that person or those friends or that job or that city where you lived or that teacher or whatever else it might be. When you look back at why you didn't want to let it go, I don't mean to answer the question for you. You'll have to fill in the blanks of the specific details. I'm just taking you to the finish line. When you examine why you didn't want to let them go, it always comes down to what you wanted them to be and not what they actually were. When you want to hold on to a person, a situation, or a place, when that has played out in your life and it's time to move on, what you're trying to hold on to is the scenario you built up within yourself of what you thought it was going to be at the beginning and not what it evolved into as the energies between the two of you co-created the reality that actually was. 
And so when you realize what it was at the time, as opposed to what you wanted it to be at the time, you can look back and say, the reality that actually existed in that relationship, in that workplace, in that group dynamic, is that something that I wanted? And the answer inevitably will be no. The moment you understand that you are holding on to your fantasy of the situation as opposed to the reality of the situation, that reversed card will naturally rectify itself. And then in retrospect, by putting yourself in the space of finishing that stuck energy from the past, the letting go will happen smoothly. These little drops of dew that represent phases in our life will merge back into that pond below, ready for the next discovery, ready for the next phase of your life. When we rectify that reversed card of letting go, this card here of stuck energy and indecision will reverse itself. You'll start to understand what it is you actually want. The way you do that is by looking into the past at what you had difficulty letting go. When you remember what it is that you wanted those things to be before they came to an end, you'll understand what your soul craves and what your soul desires. Those unfulfilled past fantasies still exist as present moment potentialities for you. You can reverse that indecision and start choosing for yourself what your future is going to bring. Now, when this card appeared in your reading right side up, representing the present, the future that was leading you into is the card of silence reversed. What is the opposite of silence? Inner chatter, constant verbalization, going back and forth between things, talking incessantly but coming to no actual conclusions and no actual clarity. The reversal of silence is noise. It's constant, annoying noise. But in the present moment, if you do the work of deciding what you want, what you want to carry forward from your past, what you want to let go of from your past, what you want to rediscover for yourself based on your past, the moment you reverse that stuck energy and start moving with clarity, it rectifies the reversed card and you have actual silence. And I think this is such a beautiful, auspicious card for us to pull today of all days, the full moon day, because it represents the best meditative aspects of that full moon energy. You'll see in this card that the moon is in the place of a face in the sky made up of clouds. Everything is moving. Clouds are constantly drifting this way and that way. The stars are in a constant, expansive motion. The moon is constantly moving through its own cycle. But in this one, blissful meditative moment of silence. The pure intuitive space opens up. This card isn't just talking about auditory silence outside, like turning off the music or putting in some earplugs. It's talking about the inner silence that comes with spiritual peace. When you're able to achieve that space of silence, you become the energy of awareness and manifestation. And before you can even think that you want something, you start automatically manifesting it. The colors in this card are some of my personal favorites, which I'm sure you can observe by the color of my tablecloth and my choice of crystals and the way I've decorated my little tarot area. The reason these are my favorite colors is that they are the colors of the higher chakras, the third eye and the crown. And so the future that is available for you as a potentiality just waiting is the card of becoming a great meditator, a great manifester, and someone who truly radiates peace. This is one of my favorite cards in the entire deck because it symbolizes the highest quest in life, the quest for inner realization. That space doesn't mean that you neglect your outer world or that you don't get anything materially. 
It means that you are so fulfilled in just being who you are that whatever else you're meant to have, whatever else you want to have comes to you. I'm going to conclude the reading with one card from the Illustrated Crystallery to show how I'm going to ask these cards to clarify the card in the middle here, that indecision card. What should our group one reading people focus on in order to let go of what needs to be let go from the past, decide what needs to be chosen in the present, and move into that beautiful silence in the future? What should the focus be? right here. The card of Larimar. First, the fire. What a powerful card. What a powerful message. I almost didn't wear this bracelet today, but for some reason I felt like I had to bring some Larimar energy into these readings, and now I see why. The stone of Larimar is found only in one place in the entire world in the Caribbean. And it's known almost universally by crystal healers as a water element stone. If you look at this patterning within the Larimar, that kind of marbled texture of white and blue, it looks like ocean waves. It looks like the sea. But when you look to the history of this gorgeous, very rare stone, it was born in the fires of a volcano. It didn't just wash up on the beach fully formed as this beautiful watery mermaid of a crystal. It came from the volcanic fire. It came like an obsidian. It was forged in fire. It became water, which means going with the flow, divine feminine, spiritual, creative, gorgeous energies. But it wasn't born perfected. It became perfected through that underground birthing energy of fire. What that means when it comes up in our own life is that the way to tackle the difficulties, the confusions, or the struggles that we're going through is to embrace those forging fires that are making us what we are. You may be feeling like you're the victim of a negative circumstance, like things have been hard on you, like people have been mean, pressures have been mounting, challenges have been presenting themselves. Maybe your body isn't behaving the way you want it to with perfect fluid health and you feel like things that come easily for other people are freaking hard for you. That's the fire. But that fire is making you into a divine representation of fluid energy, of beach vibes, of vacation. You're working towards, you are earning your right to enjoy that silence that you're working for. So in order to overcome the present moment challenges, don't shy away from that fiery energy. And also notice how there's a mirroring going on here. The shape of this drop of amber in the very first card of your reading is so similar to the shape of this fire coming out of the volcano in the Larimar card. Both of these stones are reminding you of the fact that your strength comes from your challenges. And so as challenging as life might seem right now, you're not going to be in that fire forever. You will find yourself washed up on a beach, enjoying those vacation harmony vibes. And I can totally see that that's coming for you by looking at that card. So there you have it. Now, of course, not every message that I just described in these cards will resonate with you. Maybe some will more than others. Take what resonates, drop everything else. These are generals here. They're not specifics because this is a group reading not an individual one-on-one -on -one reading. So what I've been saying here is for everyone who chose pile one, but there might be little bits that are more specific to some of you than others. Don't worry about that. Just take what resonates, leave the rest. 
And if you're curious to see what a one-on-one -on -one reading would be like where it's just me and you, wait, it's coming, and I will share the links as soon as they're available. Meanwhile, much love, and I hope you stay blessed. I hope you get through this fire and achieve that beautiful silent space that you deserve. Let this full moon energy be the portal that takes you into the best of who you are. And now I'm going to set the space and move on for group two. All right, card pile two, it's time for your reading. Before I get into it, I'm just going to cleanse the table with incense. Pile one's reading went pretty deep and I don't want any of that energy affecting the messages your higher guides are going to channel through for you right now. And so the last preparatory step as we enter into this, I'm going to play the singing bowl. We'll let the energy of that sound bath fill the space. And as I do that, I'll set the intention that all the messages coming through today come through from your highest guidance for your highest good. Okay, take a deep breath, and on that note, we're entering into your reading. So before we even look at the cards, the first aspect of your reading is in the crystal that you selected. This stone is rainbow fluorite, and the energy of fluorite is the energy of mental prowess, your studies, your memory, being able to tune into the wisdom that you need when you need it. This can mean going into a cycle of academic success. It can mean launching a business. But whatever it is that you're doing at this point of time in your life, it's important for you to stay mentally sharp and with it. When rainbow fluorite is the crystal that you're drawn to, it means that you are deepening your connection with your mind. You're really activating that brain power, which is awesome. Good for you, group two. So the first card I'm going to draw to kind of set the tone for the reading to understand what energies are playing out right now in your life is from a deck that is full of crystal energy. If you're already familiar with me, you know that crystal healing and crystal energy work is one of my top passions. All right, it feels like this is your card. So your first card is the card of copper and eucalyptus. So copper, interestingly, is a metal, not a mineral, but it's here in the crystal deck anyway. And it carries such a cool vibration that I'll describe to you right now and see if this resonates. The vibration of copper is the vibration of energetic connections. When you wear copper jewelry, when you carry a piece of copper as a talisman, or if you are so blessed as to sit and meditate within a sacred geometry structure made out of copper, you are tuning yourself really deeply to the messages available within you from your guides and from existence. People who work with copper energies in the form of making copper pipe pyramids to sit in describe copper as being the most conductive of all the metals that we can work with when it comes to opening our intuition, whether that's to channel or whether that's to understand our own bodies for self-healing and for healing work. So when the card of copper comes up, it would be great for you to start wearing a copper bracelet, maybe just to help with your circulation. It's very cleansing, it's healing to the blood. A lot of people swear by that for things like arthritis to help alleviate the symptoms. But it could also be fun for you to explore the copper energy that a lot of mystical artists who make organite will talk about, which is that copper tunes us to a higher frequency. When that's coming up along with eucalyptus, 
You might choose to have some eucalyptus drops added to your bath, maybe put it in a diffuser. That also really powerfully speaks to the mental energy as exemplified by the rainbow fluorite that you chose. Working with that eucalyptus, it clears your sinuses, it clears your senses, and that leads to a greater utilization of your brain power. So with that first card kind of setting the tone, I've picked up my kyanite because it is time to look at your tarot messages. So I'm reading your cards through the Osho Zen Tarot. And say what you will about Osho as a person. I mean, I've watched Wild Wild Country. I know he was no savior to the world. And I don't really believe in gurus or that any one man has the answers for everyone. But I still do love this tarot deck. It has such a beautiful energy to it. And I think that's because of the creative power of Ma Deva Padma, the artist who designed it. So I'm kind of saying that as a disclaimer. I'm not reading these cards as a way of saying, you should go follow that guy who started Rajneeshpuram. Now I'm reading these cards because I love these cards. All right, I think that's enough of a disclaimer. So the way I structure my readings, I go with the present first, then we look at the past, and then we look to the future. So I'm seeing some difficulties going on. Right now, your card of the present moment is the card of compromise. When this card comes up, it means that you feel you have to censor yourself and tone yourself down a little bit in order to get along with others around you. When we look at the faces of these two characters on the compromise card, it doesn't exactly look like a happy compromise, like I'll give you some of my dark chocolate if you give me some of your peanut butter. It looks more like a stalemate, like they're both mutually dissatisfied with the compromise. They're both giving up something that they don't want to give up and having to accept something they don't want to accept. When this card comes up in a general reading like this, it could be relating to a relationship, an aspect of your career, a family situation, even a health situation. It could be society in general. Like you have to change something about who you are in order for others to accept and value you. And similarly, you have to accept shit from people that you don't think you should be forced to accept. Now this card coming up in its right side aspect rather than its reverse aspect means that this compromise is something happening that you are already aware of. Now if we look to the past to see what created this present moment of compromise, we see the card of consciousness in its reversed form. Consciousness is one of the most deeply mystical cards in this deck. And it represents feeling oneness with existence, really embodying your power, knowing that who you are is not just your body. Who you are is the conscious awareness of existence experiencing itself through your body. Really, it's the enlightened state. When we see this reversed in your past, past typically goes back to childhood. And what this means is that you had a very profound spiritual gift in your younger years. You knew something about yourself and about life that a lot of people forget the moment they're born. When we see that card in its reversed aspect, however, it means that the people who nurtured you, the people who, for all intents and purposes, they should have nurtured that gift, instead they discouraged it. Consciousness reversed in the childhood space in a reading means that you were not encouraged to meditate or to explore the depths of your creative talent when you were young. And at that young age, you learned that people would think you were weird if you talked about mystical visions or divine intuitions. And so the self-censoring that led into the present moment compromise 
is something that started a long time ago. It could be a parent laughing at you when you tell them your goals for the future or who you want to be or what you want to do. It could be kids at school trying to force you to play games even though you wanted to sit in meditative contemplation instead. I'm resonating with you, Pile 2. This, this, as I'm describing the energies in your reading, I can tell you I have been there. I, I know what you're going through or what you went through, and it's not fun. It's feeling like all the greatness and glory of who you are, the things about yourself that you love the most, have to get swept under the carpet and you have to put on the face of ordinariness. You have to pretend to be like all the other people. So when you learn to turn off your consciousness, to turn off your cosmic connection at a young age, that leads you into an experience in your later years where you feel like you have to compromise to get along. You can't just be you. You know, you hear all those influencers saying, you do you, live your best life, follow your passion, follow your bliss. In your case, that doesn't come easily because you were told at a very young age that who you are, what you find as your bliss, where you experience your cosmic center just simply isn't acceptable down here on earth. And so instead, you play this game you compromise, you alter your identity thinking it's going to make other people happy. Meanwhile, it makes you feel unfulfilled. And as a result, by that law of attraction, you pull into your circle of reality other people who are compromising and who are also unfulfilled. Like attracts like. And so when you're constantly stifling your creativity, avoiding going into the meditative depths that you wish to experience, the reason you're not finding a support system of people around you who are vibing with the highest frequency, it's because you're not allowing yourself to vibe with the highest frequency. Now, the future, which as I said, is not a definite set in stone thing. This card comes up as the future if the compromise continues. So if you keep stifling your creativity, toning yourself down, limiting the amount of spiritual exploration that you do, if that continues, the most likely future you're stepping into is a future of the burden. You in this card are represented by the character on this treacherous mountain hike. The burden represents the people, the ideas, the illusions of life, the situations that you feel you are stuck with. So imagine for a moment, you're out in nature, you're on a mountainside, you're hiking, forget what's going on in this card, like picture the best possible version of this. You're somewhere in pristine nature and you're on a hike and you're enjoying yourself. Now imagine, like an asshole bully from the playground when you were a kid jumps on your back and now you're on that same hike but you're carrying a jerk and now imagine the peskiest inner thoughts of self-doubt that you have jump onto the back of that bully like this little rooster here just annoying the shit out of you suddenly that hike doesn't seem so much fun anymore. Yeah, you're outside. Yeah, you're in nature. But you can't fully enjoy that moment because you're being bogged down by the people and the thoughts that don't lead you towards the greatest feeling about yourself. The burden card really if we look at it romantically, it means continuing on with a partnership, even though that partner is extremely critical of you, maybe yells at you a lot, doesn't appreciate you for the consciousness that you have, but instead forces you to compromise. So if you came into this reading looking for a relationship message, it's very likely that you've attracted towards yourself a partner who is feeding off your energy 
of repression, who's feeding off this feeling of, well, I can't be who I am, so instead I'm going to pretend to be who this other person wants me to be because that's what I've been taught from childhood. My mom didn't like when I expressed myself, so I have to kind of keep myself guarded and put on the face that she wants to see. Then your partner will similarly expect you to become what he or she envisions of you rather than what you would envision for yourself. The future that that would lead to is a future where you feel weighed down. Like, yeah, you're on this journey with someone, but you don't feel exhilarated in their presence. You're not co-creating that hike. You're not holding hands and walking up that mountain together. You're carrying their weight. Even if it feels externally like somebody is maybe financially supporting you, maybe if this relates to a career, which it could, it doesn't have to be romance. It could be that because from a young age you were taught to compromise and hide who you are, so you got a job not doing what you want to do, but doing what somebody else wants to do, pretending to be the employee they want you to be rather than the creative conscious being that you are, that will lead to a life path where instead of climbing that mountain to reach the summit for your own sake, you are climbing that hill, carrying the burden of your boss, of your coworkers, of the team around you who don't necessarily share your goal because you think that's what you have to do in life. So that burden card really shows that you have responsibility. Like the flip side, the positive aspect of this is that when you make a commitment to a person, to a job, to a belief system, once you commit, you are in it all the way. You will give your everything in order to achieve success. The downside of that is that others will definitely take advantage of the fact that they can pretty much walk all over you as the character is doing in this burden card and you'll take it and you'll carry them anyway. So like I said, the future is not set in stone. The future depends on the actions you take and the decisions that you make in the present moment. So in order to relieve yourself of that burden, the decision to take in the present moment is to reverse that compromise. The way to do that is to look within yourself and find out what it is about you that you cherish and that you value, but that you feel other people won't accept. And so you stifle it. Are you a musician, but you feel like people won't resonate or vibe with the music that you make, so you haven't made any music in a while? Are you an artist, but you don't let anybody look in your sketchbook because you don't think they would appreciate your work? Or maybe you've stopped drawing or you've stopped painting because you feel like you're not supposed to because the world hasn't responded well to it. Or going back to your earliest childhood, are you putting on a different face because the very self who you are that goes beyond even your creative talents or your personality, you felt had to be hidden. So in order to alleviate the compromise in the present, do a little soul searching. Think back to your childhood. Was there ever a time when you were really excited about something and a parent or a teacher or one of the people who you really respected told you that's stupid or that's silly? Did you tell somebody you wanted to be something or do something and they laughed at you as a kid? And from that moment on, you've kept your feelings to yourself, your thoughts to yourself, your goals and your ambitions and your realizations. By nature of the fact that you are alive now and you are listening to this reading and you chose the pile two reading, that means it's possible for you to reawaken what it is that you started repressing in childhood. The way to that healing is just to make a decision right now that nobody's opinion of you matters more 
than the pure conscious expression you awaken within yourself. Think back to that time when someone told you, you're not good enough, you're wrong, your ideas are bad, your feelings are silly, your dream is stupid, you'll never be that, you'll never do that. Go back and give yourself the nurturing that you weren't given properly by the people who should have given it back then. Be that loving, compassionate parent to you. Your inner child is crying for some of that encouragement. And it doesn't have to come externally. It comes from within. Look at your own inner child and say, Dear, you are great. Your ideas are exciting. The consciousness you experience is pure. You are connected to the universe. You are perfect as you are. And you don't have to hide your radiance to get along in a world of darkness. You can shine. That's what you're here for. That's why you were born. You weren't born to hide your greatness and get along with a world that's constantly compromising. You were born to bring something new to the table. You were born to shine some of that light into the darkness of the world. If you can look back to your past, you don't even have to identify a specific moment if it doesn't come to mind. Just look to your past and feel that energy of shyness as a kid, of feeling like you have to hide your gifts for fear of rejection. Go back and tell that younger version of yourself, you do you. You be who you're meant to be. Enjoy your life and shine your light. The moment you do that, that consciousness card from the past becomes rectified, not reversed. And the compromise card of the present reverses itself. You no longer have to live a life of compromise. You can start living your life for the sake of being what you want to be, not what you think others expect you to be. And when you reverse that compromise in the present, you'll also reverse that burden in the future. The future depends on the actions you take and the decisions you make. I know I sound like a broken record. I'm saying that over and over again, but I'm saying it over and over again because it's the truth. And so that means you don't have to move into a future where you're carrying the weight of a partner who is just pressuring you to change yourself for them. I feel like somebody listening needs to hear this. Relationships are not the coming together of two perfect people. Everyone has flaws. So don't expect that by perfecting yourself, you'll draw the perfect person. You're never going to be perfect. Nobody else is going to be perfect. As long as we are in human bodies, there's room for improvement and there's room for growth. So it's not like by becoming perfect consciousness, you'll attract somebody who's perfect consciousness. What it is, is that by deciding not to hide your truth, not to censor your consciousness, you'll attract somebody else who appreciates the growth you're doing, the changes you're making. Instead of attracting somebody who wants to change you, you'll attract somebody who's working on themselves also, who's making the changes they need to make in their life. That's the sweetest kind of a spiritual union because neither of you will be burdening the other, you'll both be encouraging the other. And so going back to this analogy of the mountain hike, you will be on that path together, taking those steps together. If it gets a little tough, if somebody's out of breath, instead of saying like, damn you idiot, you're so out of shape, what's wrong with you? The other will be saying, come on, one more step, you can do it. It'll be encouraging, not nagging, not complaining, not discouraging. And of course, that's not just relationships. It's also business and finances. If you drop the feeling that you have to compromise and work towards somebody else's idea of you as an employee or as a creative person, if instead you understand that you bring something new to the space, your ideas are valid, you start speaking up and sharing and contributing, the future you manifest will be you striving to realize your goals instead of just a company's goals. 
that doesn't mean you have to become an entrepreneur and start your own business if you don't want to. I think for some of you, that's going to be it and you'll be successful. Just work from the space of consciousness and don't feel the need to compromise. You know, don't stifle your imagination. But even in the space of working for somebody else, you might be surprised just how receptive and excited the people you work with or the people you work for might be if you open up and share some of the ideas you've been holding back. And then instead of being burdened by the rules and regulations of the workplace, who knows, you might be given your own project, you might be put in charge of leading a new initiative, it could be a really good thing. I'm just, I didn't do this for group one, but I feel inspired to do this for you. I'm going to pull one card. I want you to hold the space with me as I do this. Set the intention to get one more card from the Osho Zen Tarot here to show us, have we shifted this energy? Have we moved out of compromise, out of the burden? So the future you're attracting will be more resonant with the pure consciousness you had when you first came into this life. Don't worry about the fact that I read these cards before uploading the video. Time and space mean nothing when we connect in this kind of spiritual zone. Now is now. You're with me now, I'm with you now. Doesn't matter what day I did this reading or what day you're watching it. If you're watching it now, then now is now. So hold that space with me. This faces the question, have we shifted the energy away from compromise and away from the burden? Woo, and look what flipped over. I wish that had been on camera, but the way I've set up my tripod, I'm sitting behind it. But as I was shuffling my cards like this, one card literally flipped and it's called going with the flow. What a beautiful energy to see. It's right side up, so it definitely means the answer is yes. We've shifted that energy as I went to put these back in, another card that was flipped up is the card of guidance. So that means listen to your intuition. You are in the right space. The guidance you need is coming to you whenever you need it. Because I lifted this up and started to expose the card beneath, it's the card of letting go. So yeah, let go of that compromise. Let go of that feeling that you have to stifle yourself or censor yourself. This is a really auspicious sign. Going with the flow means we have definitely shifted away from compromise. So instead of the burden as your future card, you're going to be living for the sake of your highest self-expression. And now I'm going to conclude your reading with one card from the Illustrated Crystallery. And this card is going to show what kind of a talisman would work best for you at this point as you move from compromise into your space of pure childhood consciousness so that you can go with the flow more easily. So I'm gonna try to do this stuff on camera from now on. Boom, this is the card. It is the card of Smoky Quartz. The message on the card is fall apart that's in a good way. It's showing these two squirrels kind of nestling in together for the winter. Actually, there's just one squirrel. It's funny, I saw the quartz cluster as a second squirrel for a moment there. But it's showing the squirrel kind of nestled in inside this tree, surrounded by what she has saved away for the winter. And the falling apart refers to everything in the outer world going through a space of rejuvenation. The leaves are falling off of the trees. The ice is building up and then melting away. It's preparing for the new phase of time, which comes in spring. When the fall apart card comes up, smoky quartz would be a great talisman for you to carry or meditate with. You don't even have to buy the stone. You can just imagine holding a piece of smoky quartz. It's a dark kind of brownish colored quartz crystal. And it has a very grounding energy. 
If you're not that into crystals, another way you can do this is to go outside, take your shoes and socks off, put your feet in the grass, put your feet right on the ground and feel the roots of the trees and the roots of the plants around you just grounding you, centering you back into your earthly home. When this card comes up, it means it's time to really ground and focus on your recovery time. The squirrel is active throughout the entire spring and summer and fall. You'll know this if you live in a city like when I lived in Vancouver, we had tons of squirrels and I would watch them from the time I got up to go to school in the morning or to go to work in the morning till the time I went in after watering the garden, I would see squirrels running up and down trees, chasing each other around trunks, constantly moving, but then they hibernate. And so when you're constantly going, 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 working, 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 striving, striving, striving for the next achievement, if you don't give yourself some downtime and some rest to enjoy the fruits of your labor, you'll get burnt out. So the Smoky Quartz card comes up with a reminder to you to have the rest that you need. Make sure that you're getting enough sleep. Make sure that when you sleep, it's quality sleep. And another thing you can do is put a piece of smoky quartz under your pillow to help you kind of ease into that pure relaxation at night. That will also be a great way to tune into the consciousness that you naturally carried in your earliest childhood. So it's a reminder, meditate, ground yourself, put your feet in the grass. If you're watching this video shortly after I filmed it, this is the perfect time of year to do that because we're moving into summer. So you're not going to freeze your toes off if you take off your shoes and put your feet in the grass. It feels so good. It's worth doing. I highly recommend it. And yeah, remember, if there's one message you carry forward from this reading, remember that you are pure consciousness and the self you were excited to be as a kid before other people told you that that's not who you're supposed to be. That is the self you're supposed to be. You know better for you than anybody else ever could. Life is not about compromise. Life is not about carrying other people's weight or carrying the weight of who they want you to be. Life is about dancing up that hill, dancing up that mountain path, going for a hike because you want to, not because somebody else is telling you to carry them to the top. I hope this resonated with you and I'm sure it did because we had the confirmation in the form of going with the flow. So yeah, relax, float on the water, let life carry you for a while. You're not here to be anybody's slave. You are here to be your own self-sovereign being. You're perfect as you are. Much love to you from me. And yeah, this was a general reading. So maybe not everything I said will make perfect sense in the context of your life. Some of the messages might be specifically for you. Some will be for other people who chose Pile 2. So if you do want to experience a one-on-one -on -one reading where all the messages that come through are specifically for you, that's coming very, very soon. Like I said, there's just one more deck that I'm waiting to receive before I launch into offering personal readings once again. But stay tuned to my YouTube channel because as soon as those readings are available, I'll start sharing the links in my upcoming videos. In the meantime, like I said, much love, and I wish you all the greatest manifestations during this supermoon cycle. Bye for now. Okay, those of you who chose group three, it's time for your reading. I'm going to cleanse the cards and cleanse the table with a fresh stick of incense. Group one and group two had some similar specific messages not the exact cards but a very similar energy so i'm curious to see if there's a collective movement that we're all going through and maybe all of us are going to have some similarities in our readings or maybe just those two groups had some similar stuff going on i'm always a student of the universe and ready to find out so let's dive in 
The last preparatory step, I'm going to play the singing bowl and let this sound bath fill the space, infuse the cards with energy. As I play the singing bowl, I'm setting the intention that whatever messages come through, come through from your higher guidance and to serve your highest good. I'm just the channel they're coming through. It's not me telling you what to do. Let's set the strong intention that what comes through now is of the highest vibration, coming from the highest space of love and light, coming from your highest guidance for your highest good. Now, as I say now, don't think of it like Sarah read these cards in the past and I'm watching this video in the present, so I'm in the now, but she was in the past. How can this work? Forget everything we think we know about time and space. The universe is in constant motion. It's now, 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 constantly now. There's no such thing as past, present, future. That's just our human perception. And so I'm here now giving you this reading. You're here now co-creating the reading through your energetic space. We'll let the energy of the singing bowl take us into that realization and then we'll get into your messages. All right, on that note, let's get into your energy group three. So even before looking at any of the cards, I want to share with you that of the three stones you had to choose from, you chose a crop circle stone. This is a piece of flint that I picked up inside a crop circle formation when I was blessed enough to enter one. Don't worry, I paid the donation to the farmer and went in with permission. And I'm telling you, the energy in that crop circle was truly out of this world. I've always identified, well not always, ever since I heard an Arcturian voice talk to me when I was in my early 20s, I've identified with crop circles and with Arcturian energies and with the energy tools the Arcturians bring to Earth. Usually I'd say whether you believe in that or not, it's a part of my life that I'm happy to share, but I have a feeling that because you chose this stone, that's the kind of out of this world energy that resonates with you. So this particular piece of flint, I chose this crop circle stone as part of the reading today because I'm doing this reading on the full moon night of this super moon in Sagittarius and I see a moon in the stone. So mother nature being the greatest artist that she is tends to mark up her crystals and stones with little bits that we can interpret. And so that lunar energy permeating this crop circle rock, I feel was so auspicious to set the tone for today. And it's funny, it's only now as I'm holding this up and looking at it from different angles that I'm seeing caverns in it that could represent meditation spaces, caves that you go into, inner worlds, other worlds, and the alignment of these three little marks that are just giving me Orion vibes. So yeah, if you resonate with an extraterrestrial, otherworldly, maybe star seedy energy, it's coming through in the pile of cards you, cho you chose. So I'm going to start the reading with a message from a deck that shows crystal and plant energies. And this card will basically set the tone for the reading before we move into the more specific messages in your tarot. All right, so cards, what is the main energy message for all the beautiful viewers who chose pile three? Feeling like they're ready? And the top card I'm turning over Chalcanthite and a beautiful flower that looks almost like lilacs, but it's different. It's called kudzu. So Chalcanthite, when you look at the gorgeous blue of this, it's my favorite color, as you can tell by my ring. Actually, my two favorite colors, that purple and that shade of sort of azure blue. 
whenever you work with crystals of that color, the energy that's getting amplified and awakened with you is the energy of the throat chakra. It's the energy of self-expression, creative expression, personal creation. So when this card comes up as the main energy card for you at this point in time, now is the ultimate time for you to own your self-expression. Speak as often as you want, as loud as you want, and about whatever the fuck you want. Now is time for you to own your voice. You may have noticed when I first flipped it over, it was upside down. And then I turned it right side up because I wanted you to see the beautiful illustration. When this card comes in a reverse aspect, when it's upside down, I interpret that as meaning you've been doing some self-censorship. And it's interesting, this is exactly the energy that I said was similar in the readings for those who picked pile one and those who picked pile two. So I'm feeling like a broken record, like I'm giving these messages on constant repeat. So this must be something that as a collective, all of us are moving through at this period of time, which is moving past the compromise and the self-censorship where we feel we have to restrict how we speak, what we speak about, to whom we speak, how excitedly we speak, we are now moving into a cycle where our authenticity is more important than our carefulness. We're supposed to be articulating what we feel, not holding back what we feel. So when that card came reversed, it just shows that you have gone through cycles where you avoid saying too much for fear that maybe the other person doesn't want to hear it. You might have ideas that you hold yourself back from expressing out loud because you think maybe others won't be into them. Now when that card comes up, it's showing do some clearing of the throat chakra. That can mean humming, chanting, drinking a lot of water really clears out that throat nicely, um, breathing in the scent of fresh flowers. You know, of course, if you have kudzu flowers where you are, smell them. If not, smell some lilacs. It is lilac season. They're blooming. And just last night, I was going for a walk and stopped to smell the lilacs. There's a golf course I like to walk past that has lilac bushes on the perimeter fence. And I don't care if I look like a weirdo in public walking up and smelling the flowers. I spent like a good 10 minutes sniffing those lilacs. And I mean, if you smelled them, you would have too. So that's coming up in your reading. Stop and smell the flowers and open that throat chakra. So now I've taken the Osho Zen Tarot. I'm gonna give it some good shuffles. And the fact that I work with Osho Zen Tarot, that does not mean that I'm a believer in Osho. I don't believe in gurus anymore. I don't believe any one person has the answers for others. Nobody else can give you enlightenment. You gotta get that yourself. But these cards are just beautiful. They carry a great frequency. I love to work with them. And I think that has more to do with Ma Deva Padma, the artist who created this deck. I think it's more her than the particular person she was following at the time. You know, they say the enlightenment the disciple reaches, it comes from the disciple, not from the so-called master. I'm feeling that energy in these cards. Maybe that's a message you were meant to hear. Maybe that was a message I was meant to hear. We're in this together, so I'll say that's what we both were meant to hear. Okay, it feels like the Osho Zen tarot cards are ready. We're going to look at these as your present, past, and future. We always start with the present because that's where we are. Then we look at the past that led to this present and we look to the future. Interesting cards, group three. Okay, we're moving in a totally new direction now compared to the readings of group one and group two. Your present moment card is the card of stress. Now, 
Look at this poor clown here. I'm not calling you a clown. I'm just saying what's on the card. This represents you. And you are juggling a shit ton of candles. You're balancing on a balloon. You're putting on this act that you feel like the world expects you to perform for them. But you're afraid at any moment that the other people who hold more power in this balance this little monkey that you've got on a string, you might feel like you decide who's in your life, you decide who you interact with, you decide who you work for, who you date, who you play with, who are your friends. You may feel on some level that you've got them on a leash, but deep down inside, you know that they hold the power to pop that bubble and make your whole world come crashing down. And that is the stress card in a nutshell. Now that doesn't mean that you are literally juggling birthday candles, blowing a horn, balancing on a balloon with a pet monkey who has a needle and might pop that balloon. What it means is that you feel overwhelmed by everything you have to do in life. You feel overwhelmed by the need to work. Sorry, I'm gonna angle this so you can see it a bit better. You feel overwhelmed by the need to work, the need to do things for others when they expect them to be done. You feel like you're constantly struggling just to keep your balance. And when that card comes up as your present moment card, it really means now is a time in your life where you are feeling so overwhelmed that you're ready to just drop and collapse. It's not a pretty picture. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but that's what the card is showing, that you have pushed yourself to a limit and you're starting to feel like at any moment when that bubble bursts, you're almost ready for it. Like what would be the greatest relief for this clown is if the monkey actually popped that balloon and then he could just stop and take a breather. Whatever we're experiencing in the present moment, it's always related to the energies that were at play in our past. So looking to the past card here, which goes back to your early childhood, we see the card of politics. On the politics card, there's a sinister looking character, kind of a snake of a person, which doesn't mean anything against reptiles or snakes. Snakes are beautiful creatures as well but the snake-like characteristics represented in this individual mean that somebody wanted something from you. They were playing you. They were trying to get you to be what they wanted you to be, but they weren't upfront about their intentions. They put on a happy mask. So the mask that we're looking at here is somebody smiling at you saying, hello, I like you, you're wonderful, you're great. But secretly behind that mask, they were thinking, ha ha ha, yeah, believe what I'm telling you because then I can exploit you. A politician trying to get votes is not going on their platform truthfully declaring what they believe in and what they intend to do for their country or their city or their party. When a politician is campaigning, they are telling people what they think the people want to hear in order to get votes. Now, when this card goes back to your early childhood, it shows that the role models you had in life from the time you were very young taught you the lesson that your true intentions don't really matter. What matters is the face you present the world. You know, stop complaining, we're in public. Don't cry, people are looking at you. Stop clowning around, you're embarrassing me. This card is like when your parent is constantly telling you, act like a good girl, act like a good boy, smile when people are looking at you, smile when your picture is being taken. And so that energy takes on the effect later in life where you never really feel like you can just breathe and just be and be natural. It feels like you constantly have to be acting. Now, in the sinister side, politics can show somebody was taking advantage of you. Somebody was pretending to be your friend, but they were only pretending to be your friend so that they could exploit you and get what they want from you. 
But the way that I'm feeling this energy in your reading, for those of you who chose pile three, what we're all kind of collectively experiencing in this, what I'm feeling is that it's less about the snake and more about the mask. It's more about feeling like you have to act your way through life. You have to pretend to be a character because others have taught you that that's how you get along in the world. That's how you get what you want. That's how you gain acceptance. That's how you gain friends. And I feel like you've been under so much pressure to perform that it's led you into this current state of stress where keeping up all of these rules, being the clown for those who want you to be a clown, balancing on that bubble for those who tell you jump on the bubble, juggling the candles for those who have told you balance this fire, it's catching up to you and you are ready to just let go and be yourself and own your truth. And what happens when this bubble pops, when you drop the candles, when you stop blowing the horn and just breathe, is that you experience consciousness. Now these first two cards, I would be interpreting them more as difficulties and struggles but the beautiful reality coming up in your reading and of course the future is not set in stone it depends on the actions you take and the decisions you make but the beautiful energy i see you moving into those who chose pile three is this energy of pure consciousness the pure consciousness card represents being in a space of total oneness with the universe being in your galactic, centered, pure self-expression state. It's the card that doesn't show the meditator meditating. It shows the realization that happens on the highest level that expresses through the meditator who's tuning in to their Buddhahood, to their Shivahood, to their Devihood, to their cosmic consciousness self. And so this feeling of stress is coming to an ending and what you're moving away from is the feeling of a need to constantly put on a mask for others to perform for others what you're moving into is living for the sake of your own truth and your own expression because it's not showing us a clear path to move from stress into consciousness i'm going to ask our guides to show me one card to bridge this gap. How are the group three people in this reading going to overcome the stress in order to experience consciousness? Wow, the card of ripeness. So when we see the apples on the tree and they are juicy and red and just ready for you to bite into them. What that shows is that there is a project you've had in the works. There's a plan that you've been formulating. And until this moment, you haven't taken it to the next level. You've planted the tree, you've watered it, you've nurtured it, you've grown the fruit, the apples are there but you haven't taken a bite yet because you're still waiting for that sign to tell you now is the time. Well, this is that sign telling you now is the time. So while the clown of stress is juggling all the rules and responsibilities and duties of the outside world, the card of ripeness shows that your creative project, this could be a book you're writing, an album that you're recording, a painting that you've been painting, a website you've been developing, a clothing line you've been designing, whatever it is, there's a creative project that you have put your energy into developing. And now is the time to worry less about being for others what they want you to be, and instead reaping the rewards of your hard work. So for some of you hearing this, you are just on the cusp of finally cashing in on your own entrepreneurial efforts. Like for some of you, I, I really feel this, you're already signing a contract, getting a deal, connecting with a client, like you are 
about to get the payout you've been building towards so that you can stop just working for others and start working for yourself. And for others, this is more of an inner shift taking place where you realize, yeah, you can do all of the things that you're doing, but you can do them without feeling overwhelmed by them. This can also mean it's time to make yourself a proper schedule and allocate a certain amount of time, say between 10 and 11, I will balance on the balloon. Between 11 and 12, I'm going to juggle the candles. Between 12 and 2, I'm taking a break and then later I'll blow my horn. And then once all of that is done, little monkey, I'll take you for a walk. Like you can still perform all the same tasks, but you can perform them better when you give them each their own separate time. Instead of trying to be all things at all times for all people, you can do things in their own time. And guess what? Your life is your life. So you decide at what time you do what things. And maybe while you're doing one thing, you take that needle away from the monkey so that there's nobody else who can interfere with your success. Deciding for yourself who you're going to be, how you're going to be, what you're going to do, when you're going to do, that's the energy of ripeness. It shows that you have come to fruition. Another word for this card, if they hadn't called it ripeness, they could have called it fruition. You're not just blossoming like a flower. That flower has turned into fruit, which is the essence of what any plant can produce. So that beautiful ripeness is leading you into the space of pure consciousness. And the other way I would interpret that is by saying that when you really relax and enjoy the fruits of your labors, that's when all the stresses, all the politics, all the external influences of the world melt away. And eventually you're not even thinking about the fruit. You're not even thinking about your success. You are in that space of just being. So as I was shuffling the next cards, two of them jumped out of the deck. You probably heard them fall on the floor. You could see that as Clumsy Sarah dropped a couple of cards, or you could see that as these two cards wanted to talk to you so badly that they jumped. And I prefer the latter, not just because it makes me look better. But the first one is called You Live in Abundance. And the crystal that represents that is Imperial Topaz. So what was I just saying about the fruition and it's time to eat the fruits of your labors and enjoy? What we see in this cornucopia are all those fruits. It's all the affluence that comes from hard work. And that's just confirming for you, who chose pile three, that your hard efforts are paying off. It is time for you to luxuriate in your successes, to really enjoy the fact that you have what you deserve. And if you don't see that financially in your life yet, just have no fear in saying what you have to say. Remember to let go of that throat chakra blockage. Present your ideas, offer your book to some publishers, find a literary agent, those who are writers. I have a feeling some writers are watching this video because those words are jumping to my head right now. But the work that you've been focusing your effort towards, now is not the time to censor it and to hold it back. Now is the time to offer it to the world. There are buyers who want to purchase what you have to sell. You are living in abundance. That means by Bashar's definition, I have a feeling it's good to mention Bashar here. All of you crop circle stone choosing celestial galactic friends of mine. Bashar's definition of abundance is the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. Holy shit, I hear Bashar now. I'm laughing at the cosmic joke that's being played on me because it took me a minute to figure this out, but now that I got it, how exciting. What was I just saying? You overcome the stress by deciding that all these things you need to do, you'll do them when you want to do them. You can still balance on the balloon, juggle the candles, blow the horn, take the monkey for a walk on a leash, but you decide when to do them 
and when you decide when to do them, the ripeness follows. So you deciding when you want to do and how you're going to do it, that is Bashar's definition of abundance. So you can drop the stress right now by remembering you have abundance. You have the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. So say that with me. I have the ability to do what I need to do when I need to do it. Big breath in. Big breath out. I hope you feel a little de-stressed already. So with this card of abundance, you're the only group in today's reading who had two cards come from this illustrated crystallary deck. The other one is breathe in your trueness. And the crystal that represents it is lapidolite, the stone of self love and self acceptance. Breathe in your trueness. Experience your consciousness. That simply means enjoy who you are. Your truth is the most important truth in your life, not who other people tell you to pretend to be in order to be socially acceptable, but your trueness is who you really are. None of us are just the smiling face on the mask and none of us are just a snaky character trying to get from anybody else. These archetypes are just binaries. They're two sides of a coin of lies, of deceit. But when you overcome that and express your trueness and breathe in that trueness, the essence of who you are will permeate. There will be no possibility to wear a mask or to put on pretenses because who you are will just radiate through. When you breathe in your trueness, your love for yourself, your joy for being yourself, your experience of your abundance, your ripening and ability to enjoy that cornucopia you've earned, that will lead you into a place where every expression that comes out of you is a blessing to yourself and to others. You don't have to pretend to be anything you're not. You don't have to put on a happy mask if you're pissed, if you're mad, yell. If you're happy, laugh. If you're excited, jump up and down. And if people are watching you and judging you, fuck them. Not literally, but like, you know what I mean? Just forget it, it doesn't matter. Be true to you, experience your abundance, reap the rewards you've worked your butt off to achieve them and you deserve them. And now is the time to enjoy them. So there we have it, group three, that is your reading. I feel like you are moving into such a powerful creative cycle. Great things are coming your way. I can't wait to hear about them. Hopefully you'll tell me in the comments. And the main message for you about what you can do at this point in time to ensure that you move into that space of consciousness and breathe in your trueness and experience that abundance is don't worry about being anything for anybody else. Heal that blocked energy in your throat. Express yourself without censoring yourself. In fact, this was the message for all three readings today. And please don't think that I always tell everybody the same thing in every reading. I don't. I go based on the archetypes represented on the cards. But I feel the main energy coming forward in this Sagittarian full moon that starts tonight is the energy of pure unbridled self-expression where we say what we feel because that's how we feel and it's what we want to say not because we have to but because that's what we are so heal your throat chakra remember that your creativity is your strength don't stress about all the shit you have to do in a day. Pick a time, get it done. You have the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. You have abundance. Breathe in your trueness and just know that the enlightened energy of pure cosmic consciousness, that is what the cards are showing you're moving towards in your future. 
So of course your future is dependent on the actions you take and the decisions you make, but based on what I'm reading from your energy right now, you are taking the decisions and moving in the direction of a beautiful, profound spiritual realization. So good for you. Congratulations, group three. You got this. Of course, not everything I said will resonate with you. Some of what I said is just for you. Some of what I said is just for another viewer watching this. These group energy readings are a lot more general than the very specific readings I offer during one-on-one -on -one consultations. So if you want one of those where literally every message that comes through is specifically for you, don't worry, I will be offering individual readings again very, very soon. I'm just waiting for a deck to arrive in the mail that I ordered specially. As soon as that's here, I will make another video announcing it and that will be available through a site called Wizio. I'm building it right now, my profile. I will share the link as soon as it's ready. But for now, thank you so much for joining me in this energy today, making my first ever tarot reading video. Much love. I wish you all the best until next time. Bye for now.